I was called out today to do several repairs at a wholesale yard and uh, one of the repairs requires me to use this kit that I picked up at Menards a while back and I figured it was an opportunity to go ahead and, and make a video and show the proper application for this product and, and it's in four different steps so we got the preparation, the filling, sanding and polishing and throughout the course I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing the, crack, the kit comes with the paste a popsicle stick for removing the paste from the bottle, the activator, it's catalyst for the uh, paste, an alcohol swab for cleaning up the area prior to application, and both 400 and 600 grit sandpaper for uh, shaping and, and sanding out the scratches, and then a flitz polish for bringing it back to a high shine. So throughout the course I'm going to stop the video a couple times and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, the first thing you do, well, I strongly recommend you get a pair of gloves and um, safety glasses. Now, what I do is I take and uh, get the 400 grit sandpaper and then just work this repair area to get the high spot off the edge. You don't want that sharp edge on the area that you're trying to do repair because you want it to be able to blend in well. So, knock it down get the edge off. Once it's done, then go ahead and clean it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and we'll, once I get this prepared, I'll go ahead and swab it and we'll get started on filling it. Okay, now to fill the thing you need a piece of cardboard. You can get, open up your paste, get your alcohol swab out, and you want to swab this area and get all that dust out so that it'll have a nice clean area to uh, adhere to. Let that dry. Get yourself a couple of good clumps of paste out. And give yourself a good six to eight drops of uh, catalyst. And put the cap back on that. And then mix it up thoroughly. You need to make sure you get this mixed up good and get it into everything or else you'll have pieces of it that doesn't cure and then when you start to sand on it it'll come out on you and you'll have to start all over again so make sure you mix it good and thorough and ideally when you're doing this if you're on a flat surface you should tape it off so that you can uh, get the thing built up higher than the actual repair because what you want is you want it higher than the, uh, the finished unit because this material has a tendency to shrink as it cures. So as you'll see, I'm, I'm building it up well above the floor, I mean the height of the tub. You need to make sure that you get in there and work on any of the air. You don't sand down and find you've got a pocket in there. And once you're comfortable with what you've got, Go ahead and let it cure. Now this could take anywhere from, uh, depending on the temperature, ideally you need to be above 60 degrees and it's above 60 degrees, it's probably about 65 or 68 right now inside this this warehouse and um, ideally it needs to be around 75 degrees and this stuff would cure in about, oh well, probably about a half an hour. But at this temperature it would probably take about an hour or so and uh, the colder it is the longer it may take. So. You need to keep that in mind as you're doing repairs. Now we'll just go ahead and let this cure, then I'll go ahead and show you the sanding it and polishing it. Okay, now it's cured and I'm going to start with the uh, 400 grit sandpaper and um, shape this. Now it may not look the same as it did before because during the curing process while the camera was off, 
it actually did shrink down a little bit more than I wanted it to, so I added some more material on top of it so that once I did sand down, I could get it flush with the uh, existing unit, uh, exi uh, existing um, height of the tub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the 400 and I want to work it down. Once I get the 400 and get it shaped down to where I want it, then I'll, I'll turn the camera back on and show you how to use the 600. Now, the, you don't have to bear down. One of the things that people like to do is just really push down on the sandpaper. Let the sandpaper work itself and it will come back, come down. Don't bear down on it. You're liable to pull the repair right out of the, uh, the chip that you were trying to fill. So let me get this work down and then I'll come back and show you how to use the 600 grit sandpaper. Okay, now down to, uh, got it that shaped and formed, and now I'm going to go down to the 600 grit sandpaper. I use some water. It helps minimize the, uh, the cutting and using the 600 to remove the um, Real fine scratches. On this unit. Very lightly just sand it and those scratches from the uh, 400 will start coming out. It will almost start to shine up on its own. Okay. Got a rag to clean that off. Okay. I'm gonna get the flips polish. Take this and Rub it on here. Work it in. Now what I've got right here is nothing more than a regular washcloth. Take it and just start rubbing. And you're giving it a hand shine, so you don't have to rub hard. Just keep going back and forth and it will start to come up into a nice shine. If for some reason you don't like the color or the, the shine, you can always go get some rubbing compound and try that. But this stuff here works exceptionally well. And uh, now as far as the repair color, there's a there's always the possibility that it may not match perfectly because the units or the companies get a different batch of gel coat about every six months and um, that new batch may not be identical to the previous one and it can come up a little bit off but the object of any repair and this is from a professional standpoint is that someone who doesn't know that it's been fixed can't just don't walk in and see the repair. Now this one has come out exceptionally well. Alright, so this repair kit from uh, Gelco Products works really good. I picked it up at the um, at Menards, like I said, and, and it can, I've been doing repairs for a long time and this one here works good. Okay, that concludes it.